Alright, this is Frank Sinatra and welcome back to this review of the Noblesse Oblige. And here we have the full kit itself. And brought in closer you can tell exactly how detailed this thing is. The panel lines on this thing were absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> One thing I need to mention now is parts will be falling off of this thing, like these just fell off. And that's one annoying part about these armored cores. Not a lot of the parts are put on very put on very well, like that small little pieces supposed to fit into a peg and it just does not hold on, no matter what you do to try and put it in there. Just short of, you know, super glue. So onto articulation. We have our head here with a on a ball joint, but this ball joint's kind of interesting. As you can see here, it's got a bit of a peg sticking out of it, which goes down into that square area, which gives it a bit of stability and a little bit of extra m movement, but not too much. And I do need to mention this about the kit overall. A lot of this kit is heavy duty with panel lines, especially if you're going to move on to the armored core, the white glint. That one is a panel lining nightmare. And I suggest using a 005 micron pen. They're really great, and as long as you don't abuse them, they'll be able to fit into all of these little lines very easily. So, and you can find the most at art stores. They cost from three to five dollars per pen, and they last a very long time. In my opinion, they're a much better buy than Gundam real t real touch markers. So, onwards we have our torso which has is on a ball joint and has forward back side to side as long as well as 360 movement for it. The shoulders are also on ball joints and can move all around like that and we up here we have ourselves a pivot joint which can perform a full 360 of the arm. If, over here in the elbow it's just single jointed and can't quite do a full 180 because it impacts the armor and same with the other way. Both of those armor plates impact each other. The hands here we have are on ball joints and do small 360s and the ball joints for the hands are actually not built into here you actually build them into the hands and they're a poly cap instead of being plastic like on um, Gundam kits. So let me get that sucker back on all right, the legs here, right here at the thigh, they are on ball joints as well, and offer a very wide range of movement. Although the balance is a bit off with this kit, so you can't really have them do much in terms of like a kick or something without it toppling over. And here on the knee, where this thing used to be, we have a single jointed leg. So nothing really special. I don't think double joints would serve these kits all that well. And down here we have our feet, which are on interesting things. There's a small piston like thing up here in the ankle, which allow it up and down. And then the feet themselves have a full 360 movement up oh, and the piston came out. So I have to just put that sucker back in. Give me a second. Hey, that's one. Like I said, this kid's very fragile. And putting it back together after it falls apart can get pretty, pretty annoying after a while. All right. Last bit of articulation for this kit is up here in the artillery cannons. Let me just raise up the camera. Up here in the artillery cannons have multiple points of movement. Here we have adjusting. It's a small peg, peg joint pushed into a poly cap. And we have each one of these can move individually for its off mode where they, they spread out like that. And then for when they're going to fire, just kind of move them all back. And that part's broken for me. So it's going to be for your kit. If you buy this, it will be a lot tighter right there. Mine just decided to break. Well, now that all these cannons come up and they actually kind of click in place. You can feel them locking down and then drag them down and 
we have ourselves some artillery cannons going on if they'd like to stay up and to the other side as well and here we have him ready to do some artillery work going on With a bit more fine-tuning you can get these things to look very very good but I am pretty much finished with this kit and oh one thing I want to show you is here on the back the back is probably the most finely detailed and probably one of the best looking parts of this kit with all the screws in place and everything you're gonna have to bust out a lot of gold or bronze whichever you want to use for it but it will look very good in the end so this kit all in all it was a pretty it was an okay buy for ninety dollars seems a bit expensive to me for a kit as fragile as this one but you live and learn and most other ACs come with well not come with they're priced at about forty to sixty dollars depending on where you look so that's it for this review and I'll see you all next time